uh, currently, it, we're in just the initial just the initial setup. So just getting the patient on the ventilator. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to talk about modes of ventilation. And there seems to be a fair amount of confusion over what modes are, what they represent. So I'm going to go ahead and try to um, try to make this as simple as possible. What a mode is, a mode of mechanical ventilation, a mode is nothing more than a way of the ventilator and the patient interacting with one another. So it's ventilator-patient interaction is defined by the mode. And what I like to think of is I like to think of a continuum. And I'll start here on the left, and then I'll work my way to the right. And on the left, I have no interaction. So the ventilator and the patient are not interacting at all. And then over here on the right, I have, I, I'm highly interactive. Highly interactive. And I have modes where the ventilator and the patient are, are interacting quite a bit. So when we start over here with, in the area where we don't have any interaction, this is uh, that mode called CMV, or uh, Continuous Mandatory Mechanical Ventilation. And the way I see CMV, it's one of the, one of the older modes. Uh, you don't see it as much on the newer microprocessor ventilators. Some of the, the German ventilators, like the Dragier Abita XLs, will say CMV, but it actually is assist control. CMV actually means assist control on some of those ventilators, so it's not a true CMV as, as we'll define it today. But CMV is what I think about going to the store and buying me a breath. It's a store bought breath. And we'll just pretend that we're in volume control and um, I put a patient in volume control in CMV, I give them a tidal volume of, let's say, 500 milliliters, and I give them a rate of 10 per minute. Guess what? That's all the patient will ever get. Controlled mechanical or continuous mechanical or mandatory ventilation, I set a volume or pressure and I set a rate, and that's all the patient gets. They get a store-bought breath. You go to the store, you buy a generic breath, and that's all you get. But what if the patient wants to take more than 10 breaths a minute? It's not going to get it. There's absolutely no interaction between the patient and the ventilator. Whatever is set in the ventilator, that's all the patient's getting. Nothing more, nothing less. Just that. So if the patient wants to take a bigger breath, sorry for you. You're not getting it. So, as you can see, CMV um, has some drawbacks because there's no interaction and because this doesn't really um, necessarily allow the patient to do a whole lot. Uh, generally, uh, patients that will go into these modes are need to be heavily sedated, generally paralyzed. You, you, you will typically see CMV in certain types of transport ventilators and then certain anesthesia machines will run in CMV. Okay. So let's go ahead and step up an interaction here, and we'll step up to the next mode that is, is seen fair, with a fair amount of, of uh, fairly commonly, and that's assist control, or AC. Now, assist control is just like CMV in that I have a mandatory tidal volume. We'll say tidal volume. We'll keep it in volume control, but it could be pressure and a rate. So if I set tidal volume and a rate, and assist control. That patient will get that tidal volume and will get that 10 breaths a minute that we set. That is mandatory. The patient has to get that. But here's the caveat with assist control. If the patient wants to take an extra breath, let's say the patient wants to take 12 breaths a minute. When the patient bears down the, the ventilator, sucks in like they're going to inhale, they will trigger the ventilator and when they trigger the ventilator, the ventilator will give them a breath. So let's, let's be very clear what assist control does. Assist control is a, is a mandatory rate and a mandatory volume. That has to be given. Ten, that 500 tidal, milliliter tidal volume, 10 breaths a minute, has to be given. But if the patient initiates breaths, they try to take a breath, in, in addition to those 10 breaths that he or she is, is already getting, the ventilator will recognize that 
and it'll be it'll what we call trigger. The patient will trigger the ventilator, and the ventilator will give the patient a breath. So let's be very clear: the patient is not taking a spontaneous breath. All that's happening is the patient is triggering the ventilator, and the ventilator is giving the patient a breath. And the breath that the patient gets is this set breath here, this 500 uh, milliliter tidal volume or pressure if we're in pressure control. So you can see there's a little more interaction and assist control is nice because I could have a patient that perhaps is in, has some sort of respiratory issue. They're, they're weak, they're tired, um, they have increased work of breathing and they perhaps want to breathe, they want to take a breath but they, they simply cannot take a breath for whatever reason. Assist control is nice because they can trigger the ventilator. The ventilator will then take over all the work and, 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 and basically give them that breath. This is, of course, not as comfortable in patients that don't have any difficulty breathing want to take their own breaths. So when we talk about assist control, assist control is not a great mode necessarily for getting a patient off the ventilator. If a patient's ready to come off the ventilator, you're generally not going to want them in assist control. You're going to want them in, in a spontaneous mode. We'll talk about that later because this is just the initial setup. Okay, so then we'll move over here to the highly interactive um, area, and this is the mode called SIMV, and that's synchronized intermittent mandatory ventilation. What SIMV does is it's just like CMV, just like AC, that there is a mandatory volume and a mandatory rate that my patient must get. So I'm going to go ahead and set 500 milliliter for my tidal volume, 10 breaths a minute for my rate or my frequency. Patient has to get that. But here's the caveat with SIMV. If the patient decides to take two breaths a minute above the 10 that he or she's already getting, so they're going to get 12 breaths a minute total, the ventilator in SIMV, he, will, he or she will trigger the ventilator. The ventilator will recognize that the patient wants to take a breath, but it will not give the patient a breath like assist control. It will allow the patient to take their own breath. So now we have a lot more interaction. Now the ventilator is saying, look, I still have to give you a mandatory rate and a mandatory volume. You still have to get that, but patient, if you want to take additional breaths, you're more than welcome to do so. And SIMV goes a little bit further, and because of microprocessor technology, the quantum mechanics has allowed us to do that, um, it will synchronize the patient's breath with this backup rate, and it will prevent something called breath stacking. Um, you see over here in assist control, uh, the patient would say the patient was having hiccups and triggering the ventilator. Every time you trigger the ventilator, it'd go boom, 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 give you a breath, and you can kind of stack one breath on top of another, and you get nice over distended lungs, and that can lead to injuries and so on. Uh, injuries, volume trauma, barotrauma, cardiac, cardiovascular, hemodynamic complications, and so on and so forth. With SIMV, that generally doesn't happen because they're synchronized and you have less hyperventilation occurring with SIMV because assist control you're getting a full breath but in SIMV the spontaneous breaths are just that spontaneous breaths now there is a support or what we call an adjunct that we can add to SIMV called pressure support and what pressure support does is it helps to decrease the resistance that the patient has to breathe against in the tubing and, it, and, and it's basically a preloaded breath and it gives the patient a little bit of inspiratory pressure uh, when, they, when they inhale. I actually will have a video on pressure support um, in this, uh, in, in this um, discussion. Not in this specific discussion, but I've already done a video on pressure support uh, all by itself. Um, it'll, it'll be actually um, in this playlist of videos, so you can watch that um, and, and go ahead and cover pressure support by itself. Um, in a little more depth that I'm going to cover here. Okay, so here are the three major modes of ventilation, and then the question is, well, what do I choose for my initial setup? Well, in the initial setup, it doesn't matter what the mode is. As long as my mode provides a mandatory rate and a volume, all three modes, if I have a patient who's not breathing, all three modes are, are fine until my patient starts breathing and interacting and then mode becomes more important. Okay guys, 
And that's it for modes, and we'll uh, see you on the next video. Take care.